Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello, Achievers, and welcome to episode 86 of the Next Level Authors Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. My name's Daniel Wilcox, and here with me every week is... The Black, counting and counting to see how many books I've read this quarter, so I can confess. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I was just reading that intro, 86. We've got like 13 weeks, and then we're on episode 100. Oh, my God, that's insane. When did that happen? I don't know. That's it, disgusting. It, it, yeah, it, it's kind of, it hurts. Because <laughs> it kind of feels like we've been doing this for like four years at this point. Yeah. Yeah, we've been friends for too long. Should we end it? I think so. It's probably for the okay. best. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> when this was, we started April 2020, in which, a year in which nothing happened of any, <laughs> anything notable. Um but yeah, yeah, and now 86. So how are you doing, Sasha? Um, well, I've had better weeks, I'll be honest. I don't really feel like talking about it on the podcast. Um, it's been spectacularly rough, is what I will say this week. Um, that said, <clears throat> I have finished editing the original book. So yeah, Trey has been edited, but because I am finishing the series where it is it the editing process is not complete Mm -hmm. so I got stuck for a couple of days which meant zero word count which was very frustrating after having like literally smashed out words every single day um but I think I've worked out that I I need to write a couple of chapters and about four new scenes and then I just need to like smooth them back through the the plot if that makes sense so um my next job is to write those scenes and then my final job is to do a read and tweak so that everything makes sense going through. Um, and I am I would very much like to have that done by the end of the month, but I'm not sure now because I lost those couple of days. They were kind of vital. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. How are you? Well, that's exciting. I think for people watching on YouTube, I'm just faffing around with my curtains because it's very bright on one side of my face. And I'm trying to like find one where I don't just like appear like two face <laughs> in Batman. Um my week's my my week's been good. I have, I like I have made so many strides with dictation, um, that it's it's not really even funny anymore. Like so, as an example, if I just get up my actual word counts for this week, I have written for three days this week, and I've gotten twenty thousand words nearly. And. I, I don't know. I don't know how to, I've been getting like just the routine of, you know, being in this new house and being sort of very on my own and able to control my time again. And then um, like I'm at a point where I've sort of made strides in terms of the technologies that I'm using to dictate. So for people interested at the minute, I am using um, the Google Airbuds A series, which seemed to be like a fantastic all rounder for car outside and just in, inside. And obviously they're hands free. And um, I've got rid of the, the headset that I bought a couple of weeks ago, just because, it was okay in the car, but everything else, it was just shocking. Um, and then I've just got the Google Pixel 6, which has loads of like the latest AI dictation technology, like voice to text stuff on there. And it is tremendous. So transcription seems to be a lot cleaner. Um, but at the minute, I'm focused very much on first drafting and I'm coupling it with walking around a lake that's just outside my house every morning, which is about one and a half K circuit. So I do that twice. I dictate at like, half six in the morning when it's quiet get my words in by the time I've come back home and then the rest of my day is literally just free to work on the things that I want to work on and before when I was doing a lot of the ghostwriting stuff with with my fingers I always felt like I was slipping behind and I wasn't doing like enough because I was just getting tired my fingers were hurting um I can say that my fingers like they're still an ache there but they're definitely infinitely better than they were three or four weeks ago which is awesome um but yeah, now it's now it's like I am just considerably further ahead, which means that I can relax a bit, which just feels like it's yeah, it's just very, very freeing. And even to the point that last night during um, one of my boot camp sprints, 
was the first time in about three or four weeks I've actually sat down and written new fiction with my fingers because I still enjoy the process of first drafting with with my fingers but I like the idea of saving that for the stuff that I want to write yeah it's just I ended up um, writing about 2000 words of a story that I've been wanting to get to and I do feel there's there's definitely a connection more and I I, I certainly feel like it will be a cleaner first draft when mm. typing I'll avoid other euphemisms <laughs> um <laughs> But with voice at the same time, like I am enjoying that process because the the client book that I've got at the minute is very heavily outlined. So it means it's quite easy just to read through, add the flair, add the spin, add the voice, expand the content and just get the words out. So, yeah, it's good. And for those watching on YouTube, I am in the new house. Way. Because <laughs> last time we spoke was the day before moving. Then Friday was a move, which was exhausting. Saturday was my son's birthday, which was exhausting. Sunday was unpacking boxes and I had my son for the day, which was exhausting. And then Monday was the first day where I kind of like just stopped and gone, ah, this is a whole day to myself. So I sorted out a load of stuff. Obviously, there's still admin stuff that comes with moving house. But for the most part, I'm in, I'm here. And um, I'm looking forward actually to a solid first week in which I'll be sticking to a sort of new routine that I put forward for myself. So yeah. It's good. Lots of change, but I'm finally at the point where I don't feel so exhausted. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, you look kind of, I mean, you still kind of look tired, but you look brighter, if that makes sense. <laughs> 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 this is just me now. <laughs> no, I think you you kind of look like sort of brighter and happier, but you kind of still look a little bit tired. <laughs> uh, I, I am um, a little bit still, but yeah, it'll come. Rest will come yeah. eventually. Um, <clears throat> what's something you've enjoyed this week? Uh, two things one very quick one um, the, so the one I've really enjoyed was reading One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston mm. so this is a lesbian contemporary romance N- I would say it was n- I would say it was new adult I think I don't know it's kind of classed as adult I think um, but uh, it's like people in university so like what's that sort of 24 age I don't know that must be new adult. I don't, I don't know. Anyway. University is like 18 to 21 here anyway. One of them's in university. Oh, but maybe she was in university a few times. I don't know. Is she a anyway. mature student? <clears throat> no. Because that's 24 know. plus. One of them's 24 and one of them's at uni. So maybe 20 and in her final year. So tw- 21, 22 and 24. 21, 22 20, and 24. Anyway, not the point. The point is it was amazing. It 67. Was Sorry, I so had numbers together quirky um her attention to detail in terms of like characterization and like quirkiness of the characters was so cool it was so detailed and I just I I loved every single second the pacing it was a little bit slow in places but I just loved it I loved the romance and it was it was a time travel story as well like and I just didn't think it was going to work. I was like, how the fuck is she going to pull this off? Like to make it realistic. And she did. And I loved it. And like, it was one of, it was one of the best stories. It, it actually goes up as one of my favorite books this year. That's so that uh, high. Yeah, it's high. And praise. you've read a lot of books. So that's quite high praise. I have read a lot of books. So it is high praise. The other thing I enjoyed doing was I've started planning next year. Beautiful. And yeah, so I brought myself a new, like big calendar. That's and then, um, annoyingly it wouldn't you know I have like those bits of whiteboard paper I actually don't have any up now Mm. um but uh it wouldn't stick on that so I've had to put it on my at the bottom of my whiteboard and you and um it's not laminated so um I'm using like post like sticky tabs so that I can Mm -hmm. take them off if things change (laughs) yeah I've planned next year more or less um and I have been I have been really restrained I'm, I'm probably still a little bit unrealistic in terms of like what I'm expecting myself to do but what um the stage that I've got to now um so I've sort of blocked out things in two month projects so I'm giving myself two months to do a project and um I now need to go down and break down what that means in terms of work count per day Mm. um but what I think is that now that I have cleared my plate and I'm saying no to almost everything like this month, I have been getting, I would say, three and a half to four and a half days a week, just me working on my stuff. And when I have that amount of time, two months to write a book that's heavily outlined is actually realistic. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I'm trying to like I I had 
six things on there like last night and I was like just take another one off just take another one off and it was so painful so I've sort of I've made one a novella um so I was like okay like because then like I think it will be anyway and I've got like a whole month in there where um like I'm just doing an audiobook and I'm not putting anything else in there like that's it it's just audiobook but you know I know I can only record in the morning so I know that I will do something in the afternoon but that's time I'm getting back if that makes it anyway so like I've just really really enjoyed it and I'm and I really found it very hard to be realistic but like I'm trying very hard <laughs> to, to put realistic things in there um so do you ever give any credence to stretch goals so for example instead of saying next year I'm going to write six books saying I'm going to write four, but the stretch goals are the other two, because then that gives you the confidence to go, I'm 100% hitting four. It then fuels your competition to go, yeah, but I'm going to go for that six. But it also gives you that flexibility so that if you don't quite get there, it's not a failure. Mm -mm. Doesn't work. Because I would just set the goal at six. Why set the goal at four if the real goal is six? Like, what is the goal? There is only one goal. So this reminds me of a conversation I had with someone very recently. (laughs) (laughs) That's do, exciting, they all, do they do they also have competition no they have no, i'm not gonna go there okay <laughs> <laughs> i think you can guess what i'm talking about i um, actually have no idea oh that's fine i can tell you after okay <laughs> <laughs> um things that i've enjoyed this week so uh i've got a cheeky three one of them well one of them's not technically a thing that i've enjoyed yet so number one uh Fuck off, Chrome. Sorry, I had a moment where my Chrome just popped up and I thought that I'd lost this entire recording. We're fine. Number one, um, I watched Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh, my God. I watched that this week. It was it's so good. Phenomenal. It's so good. Oh, my God. I loved phenomenal. it. Yeah, like, Atlas watched it too. And he was like, I want to be Ten Rings. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> it did it make me so a lot good. of the time, just because of the fact it's Ten Rings, I just kept thinking of Sonic. <laughs> yes, so did I. <laughs> but it's, it's such a good film. It's a heroine's journey. Mm-hmm. it's what I was saying to him, one of my friends the other day is like the thing that got me about that film was some films um and I will name this one because it had so much potential to be amazing films like Aquaman start off very very small and in one movie they escalate to such massive proportions that I go that easy could have been a trilogy you could have done so much with this story but you tried to squeeze it into a film and it just felt like too much for me anyway like I I kind of enjoyed the premise of Aquaman, but I just thought, you know, this would have been an amazing trilogy and they just packed too much into one. Whereas Shang-Chi, it was kind of similar in in its escalation and I won't give away any spoilers. Um, But like from the first 20 minutes in the place that it starts, I could never have anticipated what happened later. And it was like every time a thing happened, I'm looking at my clock going, there's still like an hour of this film left. Like, where's it going to escalate? And then it would just escalate, but in such a way that it just felt natural and right to the story. And just the CGI and like, again, I'm really holding back from spoilers, but everything about it was just very, very beautifully delivered. And it had that essence of like old style Kung Fu movies as well, Mm -hmm. obviously in the Marvel universe. Mm -hmm. So I was just, I was blown away. So here's the thing about me in when I was just after university or maybe at university, I'm not sure. I was absolutely obsessed with Asian inspired films. Mm -hmm. Well, not inspired Asian films. So films like hero warrior house of flying daggers, uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, um, uh, lady of vengeance. I think it was all of those films that, that, that were in, um, I don't know, Cantonese or Mandarin or whatever the language was I I don't know but that I had to watch in subtitles um because they have this like the exquisite level and attention to detail um in terms of settings Mm. was insane like and I I really want to show them to Atlas but I don't think he's quite quick enough at reading uh, to keep up just yeah. yet and I hate dubbing so I'm just waiting like another couple of years because he absolutely loved the Ten Rings film um, and I think he'll love those other films because they're all like martial arts and all about like magic and mythology and oh my god yeah amazing so yeah that I whole completely... mythos is amazing but yeah I yeah. wasn't expecting anything from it really I was like oh it's just another another Marvel film and yeah it just blew me away um, and the other thing that I enjoyed so um, I've already had six winners through my nano boot camp which I am so freaking happy with. So I do want to do just a live shout out to Sam, who finished it in 11 days. We got Ara, who was like 13 days. Julie, Bobby, Renee is one of my proudest. And if you're listening to this, Renee, I'm still going to like harp on about this because, and I, and this is why I'm very, very proud of Renee. 
three weeks ago so not that long ago three weeks ago she literally said to the group i'm just a slow writer i don't think i could ever finish a nano i will try but i will never finish a nano and then some like she was she kept up and she was a just in front of where she needed to be slightly and she sort of built up that that bank of extra words in case she needed it and then in the last week she just she was hitting five six thousand word days and just smashing it and just absolutely getting it done and i'm just like i'm incredibly proud of everyone who has done it so far and we've still got a lot of people who are on track to complete who i am again like i'm just in awe of the effort that people are putting in and Mm. just the motivation and just the the dedication they're giving to the words so yeah just that has been very very humbling and the thing that i've enjoyed that isn't quite a thing i've enjoyed yet is that my fingers are feeling better which is fucking awesome also the new pokemon game comes out today so it means i can play <laughs> the game guilt-free because with any luck my fingers won't hurt while i video game so there you go a whole stack of stuff excellent um quarterly confessional so sasha will read 30 books this quarter I think I've read 15 and a half. I thought you said so. 50. Fucking yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many weeks I've got left, though. I'm starting to twitch a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. five six. Six weeks to read 15 books. What's that? Three books a week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and you wanted to aim higher. Listen. I oh, know. Hang on a second. 15 divided by six. Two and a half books a week. Oh, yeah. I did that. But the thing is, is I'm I I up and down. So like this past week, I've barely read anything. But then like I have weeks where I read like six books. So it just yeah, I just need to be a little bit more consistent to get over that line. I mean, yeah. every single quarter I've read more than 30 books. So I'd be very surprised if I don't read 30 books. Mm-hmm. Smashing your 100 yeah. um, logo for the thing you've got done. Mm hmm. Create a plan for a series of masterclasses. You said you're pretty much done. <clears throat> well, yeah. So um, are they on your calendar? kind of yeah I'm getting there I started looking at that last night and I've put in one two course two spaces for courses and then um but I also want to do master classes and so what's what's interesting is although I got lots of people live on the master class I'm not seeing as many like sales afterwards whereas I'm still seeing sales for the anatomy of prose course and obviously that's a different kind of course Mm -hmm. so don't know even though I had lots of excitement for the master classes I want to do the thing obviously that that people want Mm -hmm. and so it might be that I have to do a bit more of a mix and match so I feel like yeah I'm kind of thinking and iterating and 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 planning and I'm yeah the thing that I can't really pin down at the moment is is the topic I think I have settled on the book that I want I think I've settled on the two book topics that I'm going to write next year so it might be that I do a masterclass on a different topic Mm -hmm. I mean of course on a different topic actually I think just talking this out and Helen's going to laugh her head off because she's like, you always do this thing on NLA. You like, don't know a thing. And then you talk it out and then you find the thing. And I'm like, I've literally Who just talks that. like that. Was that no, nobody, also she's Australian. <laughs> so like, she clearly doesn't sound like that. She's, you know, you're more like, good eye, mate. You know, and that's a terrible Australian accent. Look, I'm just going to shut up. You start. What Have I said all my things or I got another one on there? <laughs> okay. um, edit accepted anthology stories. Yeah, that's not been done. <laughs> that's got to be next month. I, I've just got to get this book finished first. I am just making a note for something to potentially talk about after the show. Uh, no teasing. Mine is Move House. I did. And what's um, what's super rewarding to me about this is I like, so I will say, I, I think I've probably said this on this podcast, but like the decision to move was probably up there with some of like the very, very difficult decisions in my life that I've had to make over the last couple of years. And I remember saying to myself that I'm going to give myself six months to save. And if I haven't moved within the year, then I'll just move back and I'll be renting. And I managed to move uh, within the year with like two weeks to spare. So like just that feeling is just huge for me. Um, And I'm very, very happy that in the end, everything rushed through and went successfully, despite like spending about three hours trying to get a fucking sofa up a flight of stairs. Um, Oh, it was killer. But anyhow, like I'm here and that's awesome. Um, sort out activated authors 2022 calendar and action the first few months of content so i am in the process of actioning the content i've got the two first months basically down um but i still need to properly sit down look at what my goals are for activated authors so that i know what i'm doing with that next year 
Um, I've got a lot of ideas. I just need to formalize them and pop them onto a sheet. Um, and then the ones that I've switched because of circumstance um, dictate a first draft. I am 33,000 words into a book that will be around 80,000 words um, through dictation drafting. Enjoying it. There are a couple of sort of slight hiccups. So a small one, for example, yesterday being that because I got a new phone, it didn't automatically pick up my headphones. So as I'm walking around, like the, the mic on the phone is picking things up when I thought it was my headphones um, and captures most of it. But there's a couple of parts where the wind buffets a bit. So it kind of snatches some of the words. So I'm going to have to go back and be very particular about cleaning that up later. But in general, going super well and dictate a short story just because I want to play around with pantsing a short story through dictation. Um, I need to actually sit down and look at what that story is going to be, but I, I'm quite confident I can at least get a draft of a story down through that. So yeah, it's going, it's going well so far. Um, and just a reminder for people who want to get involved in our quarterly challenge, you can go over to our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash next level authors. And for those who pledge their goals and then get involved and make it happen, they will win uh, one of three prizes. We've got a 30 minute call with myself and Sasha. Am I reading? I might be reading the wrong thing. We have three prizes. They're up on the Facebook group. I won't read them in case they're not the actual prizes, but they're there. Um, patrons. So we've got a new patron, Tom Fowler. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Welcome. You absolute legend. Thank you so much for joining us. And if anybody else would like to join us and be able to jump onto our monthly Q&A sort of chit chat, chin waggy, catch up, warm, fuzzy feeling sessions, um, then you are welcome to by visiting patreon.com forward slash next level authors. Yes. Our last one did run for two hours, which was a long one. Mm -hmm. um, and I still I'll be putting up for YouTube for that today for people who missed that one. Um, notices. What you got, Sasha? So <clears throat> I am running a Black Friday discount. And if you would like to get either of my courses, so the Villains Masterclass replay uh, with the 5,000 words of notes and slide deck and yeah, video replay with the Q&A and the audio and the sort of summary cheat sheet, then you can, or you can get the three or four hour long course, uh, the Anatomy of Prose, the Senses, uh, with a 30% discount. And the discount code is Black Friday 30. Um, and you can get that by visiting sashablack.thinkific.com. For some reason, I really like the word slide deck. I don't know why. I like the word slide deck. It's too. just, yeah. I can't, I can't work it. But anytime someone says it, I'm like, that's a, that's a cool phrase. Um, <laughs> for mine for anyone who <clears throat> wants to find their writing family um you can head over to activatedauthors.com um and what i will say because though i can't say much in a minute because um, i will be giving all community members the priority access to this new information but there is a lot of stuff upcoming that i am very excited about that i'm not yet ready to announce but will be um very very big for the community so keep an eye out for that and find out more at activatedauthors.com uh level ups Yes, level so up. we have a level up. Brett Jackson says, I have, I love this story. I have a piece of software I use, writing related, but the free version is limited. I read the support docs and noticed the reg code, the registration code in plain view. I tried it and unlocked the whole thing for free. I contacted them. They said, thanks for being so honest and gave me a free code worth $99. <laughs> which I think is hilarious and super <laughs> ironic. So yeah, that is fantastic. That is rewarded awesome. for honesty. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Uh, last week's comments. How do you cope with pressure? So Maggie Monet said, um, in general, I put my big girl panties on and then procrastinate until they are giving me an un... un <laughs> 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 under pressure under pressure uh bowie and queen on repeat or insert 80s soundtrack here and crack crack it out at the last minute even if i've been ignoring things my brain is working on them not having an external deadline can be death to my productivity though great episode mm. melissa climo says or climo climo oh i don't know if it's climo or climo I'm gonna i ask think you her. want to ask me 
No, I don't want to ask you. I will just ask her. Um, <laughs> excellent episode. Uh, I definitely need pressure or like Sasha, I lose inertia, but I constantly struggle to juggle types of pressure coming from different parts of my life. It is not balance. Nope. I do the Phoenix thing. Pressure is a fuel, but sometimes I go for too long with the wrong mix and that equals crash and burn. Yeah. Edwin Downward said, good question, given you started by pointing out there are different kinds of pressures we can be put under. My gut reaction is to answer, uh, I curl up under the biggest rock I can find until it's over. A bigger rock means it requires a bigger predator to rip it off me. On the flip side, being a people pleaser, I need a certain level of outside pressure to keep me motivated. Too much, and and I may say why bother, but at the right levels, it impels me to continue because someone expects it of me. Yeah, sometimes it does need the right person and the right formula to make it happen. Mm. Nice. So I've got a question for you, Sasha. Are you ready for it? No. Um, so this is something that I am working into my calendar for next year. It's something that I'm reading a book on at the minute by Elena Johnson. Um, and the question that springs from this is, what systems do you have in place for your marketing? I don't. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> it's the end of this episode. <laughs> um, okay, so I would say I do AMS ads twice a month. So I will set them up. I will check them about four days later to make sure they're not spending loads of money um, or that they are spending loads of money, but I'm getting loads of sales off the back of them. And then um, a couple of weeks later, I will do them again. I would say in the last two or three months, that's probably dropped to once a month. Um, So I need to just pick that back up, but it's been a crazy few months. Um, I would say I'm much better at that new year on I tend to ease off the ads around Christmas just because they get really expensive um and that is very automated now I would say I just get a sense for when my sales start dropping that like it's very intuitive I don't like I am not one of these people that will analyze all the data I just look at the data and I get a feeling and I get a sense of what's working and what's not I can't I don't know how to explain it I'm not a numbers person I don't like spreadsheets so I just don't treat it like that I look at the data, I look at the ads, I look at um, sort of what the sales corresponding kind of says, and then I just make decisions, shut them off, restart them, you know. Um, So that's that one. Going into next year, uh, on the first of each month or the first working day of each month, I'm putting a little note to book promotions. Um, But that won't be until probably April so like quarter two and the reason for that is I will have a full complete series so at Mm -hmm. that point I will then be able to do discounts and promos um I'm trying very hard to do something around Black Friday so I've done something around Black Friday this year I will put that in my calendar to do something on Black Friday next year I am also trying to be a bit more strategic so um one of the books that I'm writing next year is seasonal um and I'm doing that for a reason um I'm not gonna say any more than that at the moment um so I will diarize like promotions around that every year um look at me saying I have no Mm -hmm. systems and then there's like loads of things that I do um and then okay so then there are other things so like for example the podcast is weekly well that is continual content marketing yeah. even in, in a way that isn't content marketing so like you know i just i just me i just talk about the stuff that i'm doing and then if people are interested they pick it up or they not then they don't um, and the other thing with the podcast though is i always try to do something around a launch so um i wouldn't it's not necessarily a system but it's just like a consistent thing that I do so like if I launch a book I'll do a special extra episode um if I when I launched the audiobook I released a chapter as a special additional episode um so I I would say I don't know that I have a system but it's a thing I remember to do I use I use the assets that I have mm-hmm. um And then another thing that I have done two or three times this year is I've done challenges on Instagram. Um, And so those I find I tend to pick up a lot of followers doing doing that. Um, But actually, um, I'm finding I can't cope and I can't keep up. So like I'm over a weekend, I'm like replying to the whole week's worth of comments. Um, And so I sort of feel like I'm not sure if it's worth doing it because I literally cannot keep up with it. Um, so I was going to do them once a quarter next year, but I don't know now. 
Um, and in terms of other systems, in terms of marketing, I keep like spreadsheets and things. So um, I have a marketing, like a launch plan, um, but I'm changing how I launch next year. Ooh. Yeah, I'm doing much lower, lower key launches. <clears throat> I'm basically throwing out all the social media. I'm not doing any social media pretty much oh. next year. Yeah. So, Tell me why. Ain't nothing um, because the launch for side characters took out, I would say, eight to 10 weeks of time. And I don't think it garnered the results I wanted. I probably could have thrown money at Facebook ads and had the same result. Um, and eight weeks of time, like there were three months where I wrote no words, essentially this less than 5,000 words. Um, and I'm not okay with that. Um, and I think my time is better spent just writing the jump. books. So um, yeah, like I'm just going to do much lower key. I'm going to do some announcements on Facebook and, um, I'll get Becca to schedule some stuff um, and I'll try and do some like podcast rounds when it's nonfiction. Um, and I'm just going to write more books. So I'm going to, I'm actually scheduling in two nonfiction books for the next tax year. Yeah. So April onwards, there'll yeah. be two nonfiction. So April 22 to April 20 uh, to March 23, there'll be two nonfiction book releases. Um and yeah, so I'm just, I am changing what I'm doing. It's not that I don't think social media, social media is great at building community, which does lead to a bigger reader base. Um, but it's also incredibly time consuming. And I, whilst I do think it sells books, I don't think the time spent is necessarily worth it and I don't know if that's because I have an established audience and therefore I can take that liberty do you know what I mean because if mm -hmm. I did this and made that decision four years ago I don't know if I would be in the same position I am today well that's the point and, of the thousand true fans theory right exactly so yeah I don't I'm not saying I'm not doing any social media next year but I am just not going to do as much as I did this year mm -hmm. um so sorry, spreadsheets. So I have spreadsheets. I have um, like a launch plan that is fucking monstrous. Like it is enormous and incredibly overwhelming. But like I, I just duplicate it every time I have a launch. And so I'm going to preen that quite a lot um, go in, going into next year. And so that tells me like, and I use that, that is very much a system, I would say, because it's timelined as well. So like I have like pre-launch, I have, you know, like six months out, two months out the week, the week after. So like I kind of split the tasks by when they need to be done. And then I also have like I collect spreadsheets of like really useful contacts. So like if I've been on a podcast before, I will keep the keep the contact details of the podcast. Like I'll make a note of people who accept articles or like. But that's a thing. I'm probably not going to do that next year. <laughs> um, yeah. Like um, so. Yeah, I keep lists of um, useful like contacts where I've worked with people before um, and stuff like that. Now, Alana Johnson is an actual fucking machine and like have you watched her 20 books to 50k vegas session not oh yet my god it's phenomenal she's so good she's so funny so inspiring oh. but she is like next level machine i i'm not i don't i don't quite know how she does it it's a it's a bit mind-boggling to me um like she really you know she released 42 books in one year there's only 52 fucking weeks how how can you write a book a week where is the time for editing i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> but anyway um yeah so i think that's i don't know i don't know if that's oh and then of course i try to plan things out so i try to say you know like the way that i've done it i can show you for listeners i will describe but for viewers you will see shortly oh hang on a second so um, on my year for next year, I have plotted out um, all of the school holidays and I've discounted uh, most of those days. So I'm trying to understand exactly how many days I have. Yeah. And then. Um, Which is so, huge. Yeah. So then um, I've plotted down Chloe's annual leave and then I've plotted my annual leave so that we all have the same amount of annual leave. Um, 
And I will leave that comment just there. And then like my pink <laughs> sticky tabs are when I want to release stuff, but I've just realized I haven't put the anthology on there. So I need to put the anthology on there. Um, so the pink ones are launches and it looks like I'll be launching something almost every month. And I was like, there is no way I can possibly launch something every month if I launch the way that I have been launching. So I have to change the way that I'm launching because here's the thing, right? And this is a really... Sorry, hang on. I'll explain that in a second. And the green ones are what I'm doing in that month. So those are kind of like the broad categories of what I'm working on. And then mm-hmm. I've got like a little key. Oh, I can't. It's like backwards here. This is a key. So, yeah. And then the second stage of that, um, once I finished putting everything Blair Witch on. projecting. I know. Sorry, everyone. Um, so once I finished um, doing that, um, I have started to break down how many working days are in each month. Um, and then um, I am going to work out what that means in terms of word count in order to hit what I think I need to hit. So, yeah, I'm trying to go into quite a lot of detail. And the other thing that I'm going to be doing differently next year um, is outlining in considerable more detail than I have been doing. Um, because I kind of learned a lesson <laughs> Uh, and the reason I hit a block with Trey this past week is because I finished editing all of the original chapters and had no outline for the new ending. And I just hit a brick wall and I was yeah. like, OK, I am more of a plotter than I realized. But now I know that I am going to input a shit ton of stuff about outlining again. Mm to try and give me, to try and bolster those skills. And I think the more of an outline I have, the faster I'll be able to write. Um, But knowing that now I can do something about that. I feel a bit more confident in the fact, because I've I've always said that I'm somewhere in the middle and I just think I'm bullshitting myself. I think I am a plotter and I need to do that because I can't. You are. Yeah, yeah. So um, (laughs) yeah, like, so I don't know. I think that's probably most of the systems. Like they feel a bit nebulous. I, I well, feel so, Alana's a very more like she's so I don't know tan I don't know like tangible she's, yeah maybe yeah I don't know. well I the thing is you, you start by saying I don't think I have systems but obviously you've just spewed all of your systems for the past like 15 minutes but and I don't mean I, I, I don't mean that in a negative way I realize like how I'm talking but like the fact that when you start thinking about it, they all come to the surface mm. is indicative of a good system because a system becomes a thing you don't have to think about. That's the point of a system. It's a thing you just do. Once mm. you set it up, once it's rolling, if it's, well, arguably if it's just successful, you always review it. But the point is that you're doing these things regularly. So that's your system. And the fact you don't have to think about them, it's doing what a system should do, which is relieving that thought process from the thing that you're doing. Um, like, so with, with my business, I think, it probably helps just to outline the different areas of my business so that I can talk about the systems I don't currently have. So I have my fiction books. I have activated authors in which I'm going to be growing membership. That's going to be one thing that I do very sort of strongly next year. And then I've also got the nonfiction books. Um, one overarching thing that I pay a lot of attention to, especially over the last like year and a half, two years is brand within a marketing system. So I'm going to be looking very, very critically next year. Go on. I want to add one thing on at the end that is okay. probably the biggest part of what I do. And I can't believe <laughs> I didn't start with that. I'm almost embarrassed. Well, so one thing I'm going to be critically doing next year is looking very strongly at the brand, the book covers, especially with my fiction, to make sure that things align and it's seamless and people know that if they're reading a particular book, it's a Daniel Wilcox book. Because at the minute, there's a kind of theme that ties them all together, but they feel very disparate. And I definitely know that from horror particularly a lot of the authors that i see doing very very successfully are the people where you can see their entire back catalog and you can tell that's a x author's book um Mm. so that and the brand of that i'm looking into very strongly Um, i've spoken a lot on this podcast about the evolution of my boot camp into wilcox writers into activated authors and so activated authors is one of my marketing systems now because it's a brand that encompasses a lot of the things that i did so within that brand like I can pull together my coaching I can pull my books I can pull the community I can pull something that's coming soon that I nearly said that I'm not going to say um but the fact that they're all under one umbrella means that when people come in one entry they can see the other things and so I don't have to work so hard to advertise each of them individually because they work cohesively together or at least that's the plan anyway that's kind of what I'm working very hard to bring together right now um 
And then that kind of goes into the nonfiction books as well, because the nonfiction books that I have at the minute are under um, Great Writer Share Press, which is obviously my old podcast. And I'm going to be working at sort of bringing them into Activated Authors. So all of that, my nonfiction stuff works cohesively together. So broad strokes, that's, that is one of my marketing systems. And that's one of the ones that I enjoy the most because I'm, I'm very visual. I like to look at the, the puzzle pieces and try and work out the map of how people come in and, and see different things. But that's, that's okay once people are through the door and they've seen the thing and they know what it's about. Um, but in terms of why the marketing systems, this is kind of something that I'm very, um, I'm not as strong on as I'd like to be. So I don't currently have a system in place to market my fiction. I have, um, you know, my ethos for the past however many years has just been release new books, bring in new readers. I have freebies through story origin and book funnel which i run giveaways from occasionally and i will do newsletter swaps and that's kind of the extent of what i do on that so i want to do a lot more um planned monthly promotions for each of my books because i do have a growing backlist that i can be doing some stuff with and since next year i'm gonna be very very i say this but you know me um but i am i'm gonna be producing and publishing a lot less under my name because I want to focus on the marketing and the using what I already have and building that. Um, that is something that I'm going to be working into my calendar for next year is times in which to sort out sort of pay promotions to look at and review sales and try and just keep my backlist filtering along while I then work on the other stuff. Um, with activated authors, uh, I'm very much going for a similar approach in terms of content marketing and creating products that will put out and will hopefully reach new people in different audiences and bring them into that whole activated authors ecosystem. Um, I'll be more actively reaching out towards um, other podcasts and trying to get on podcasts as like guests and, you know, different appearances. And one thing that I haven't done too much, but I want to look into is um, sort of like radio and YouTube and like TV if possible to see if I can get around that kind of stuff. Um but yeah, at the minute, as I say, I don't have that much in place. So this is why this question is here, because a lot of my next year is going to be much more focused on marketing over production because I'm not a fan of ads. I just fucking hate them. Um, like I can do ads. They go OK, but I just and it's one of those things where you see people hitting that next level by doing amazing things with ads. But it's an entire part of my brain that I need to dedicate towards really focusing. And I've got um, someone that I'm working with at the minute. Um, she's doing a lot of stuff with ads and getting very granular into data. And she's doing like really good things with sort of like testing and making sure. But that's, that's like one of the main focuses she's looking at. And obviously I have all these other facets of my business to run. Mm-hmm. So Nora yeah. Phoenix um, huh? at the 20 books to 50 K did a killing it in a niche or something like that mm. um, talk, which was phenomenal. She makes like $500,000 a year and doesn't do, doesn't do ads. Well, yeah, well, this is, so this is my thing. Like my, my entire marketing strategy at this point is looking after the people who come in. Yep. So with, with my fiction, I, I need to do a bit more there to kind of like serve that audience. Um, and my aim is once sort of the ghostwriting shifts and I'm entirely on my own, I can put a lot more seeds in that. Um, but I do think a lot of people put so much focus into bringing new people in that they don't take care of the ones that they have. And it's much harder to bring someone in than it is That's to keep That's exactly, them. exactly what she said. Mm-hmm. It's true. Like If you have a fan come in, look after them, treat them. Like, so one thing that um, I've offered to the people during my November boot camp is um, I basically set them challenges and said, like, if as a group you hit a certain percentage of success within the group, I'm going to give everyone a free month of activated authors for December. And if you are an individual and you hit a certain challenge that I've given you, you will secure your free month of activated office for December. And for me, that means losing out on what could be a considerable amount of money. But at the same time, I don't care because I'm, I'm serving that audience. I'm giving them something that, you know, will help their career. And for me, I much more value keeping people within the group and giving them the stuff that they want than I do finance. Mm -hmm. And like, don't get me wrong, like in the long term, if people stay for longer, that obviously works better in my favor. But ultimately, I want to make sure that people feel appreciated, like they have a chance to really establish themselves in the community and that they just actually get something decent out of it. Like, I, I think it's it's you cannot underestimate that, especially if you're on nonfiction and you've got people coming to you for editing services or like cover services, whatever. 
if you have a solid base of clients that will use you because you give them fantastic customer service, that will serve you so much better in the long run than if you're constantly just like doing the quick thing and just trying to bring in new people and it's all those quick transactions. So making people feel valued is huge and just, yeah, one of the big staples of my marketing. So I guess in conclusion, I do have a lot of tactics that I'm going to be looking to employ next year with Mm -hmm. my fiction. Um, But overall, my big sort of the way that I see my marketing is brand and value. Yeah. Um, Do you, like I have a brand guidelines as well, like which is Mm -hmm. kind of a system because I stick to the same like color palette and, but like that feels very, that's very transactional as opposed to like that ethos and like what you stand for and the idea behind you if that makes sense yeah um the one system that I didn't talk about which is probably like for me with high competition is like the most fundamental I start with the market so I kind of have a system for digging into the very specific niche genre of the book that I'm going to write um, and just absorbing like information, absorbing rankings, who ranks, when they rank, when those systems check, like when who, when the market changes and fluctuates. And I, I understand all the tropes and the feelings and the emotions and the tone. And even like I, I know like key phrases that the things say in in the genre and it was really funny listening to Nora Phoenix who also has high competition like she was like I check the ranks every day and I was like well yeah like but that's like really alien to loads of people and I'm like well no because I literally am on Amazon every single day and that's how I know my market is because I'm watching the market constantly I'm watching to see what happens and I think that is a very um very integral part of my system um it's just that it's so deeply buried in my subconscious because I do it automatically um but I think yeah and like I watch authors and I look at like this whole understanding the market is is kind of from two perspectives perspectives for, for me one is um understanding the genre and two is understanding the people behind the the books Mm -hmm. so you know how are they marketing are they all in KU are they doing price promotions are they doing more newsletter swaps like and so I just watch the marketing from afar to see how people do things and then usually I do it a different way (laughs) (laughs) but anyway that's not the point the point is is that I kind of that is a very key part that feels like one of the most important systems to me because I don't feel that I can publish and write a book without knowing the market Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, absolutely and I I do like what you said about brand there because I know um you say that sort of like color and and fonts and everything feels a bit um like tactic-y I guess but ultimately when you're building your brand when you're building that visual image that people know you by number one the more professional it looks well professional is a subjective term but the more professional they they can look um the more people are going to trust what you buy or what they buy of you um the more you can evoke and this is sort of speaking a bit more to nonfiction, but I guess also in, in your fiction covers and things as well, the more you can evoke a particular feeling and give readers that connection of what they will get from you when they buy, when they come closer to whatever it is you're offering, um, the stronger that connection is going to be from the start. And like, just, yeah, that stuff's huge. I mean, in my, in my old job, one of the missions I was, I was sent to execute was we had, um, we had a central brand for where I used to work for, but then each department had its own mini brand. So as an example, and I won't go into the actual colors and stuff just for fear of um, <laughs> saying things I shouldn't, but like say the central color is Sasha Black Purple and say that, you know, your podcast is a department, but the podcast was yellow and then your books were another department and they were green and then something else was a different department and that was black. And what I had to do, because people were coming in at different entry points and not understanding that they were linked and so they could get really good service from one person and then that wouldn't translate to the rest. And ultimately, in a way, it's kind of nice because they can get really bad service from someone else and then that doesn't link in with the rest. But one thing that I had to do was basically make that purple bleed into other departments mm. so that when people come in for this service, they're also aware that it's linked to this, which gives them more confidence because they know how much stuff you're doing. Mm. And it also means that they're more likely to use you because they're more aware of the other stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, as I say, I'm, I'm, looking a lot more into tactics i don't i don't want to social media 
which is one thing one tactic that i do have at the minute is um i do have um ava that does a lot of my social media stuff so puts together videos puts out content and that is really good as sort of brand outreach and just keeping my name sort of floating up in um certain social media platforms but at the same time i i want to be much more targeted with who i reach and how i how i get my brand and things out there so that's something that i'm looking into is do i look less at social media for marketing for launches and if so what are the strategies do i employ i'll leave that there but yeah anything else you want to add to that no big things in 2022 though Mm. Mm. welcome to the next level authors folks Mm. sounds (laughs) like we're both going to be leveling up here's hoping here's hoping um but yeah for anyone who uh well, the question of this week is what systems do you have in place for your marketing? And we will leave it there. So thank you all for joining us and we will see you next week. Bye. 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 Hungry for more? If you enjoyed this podcast, you can hear more of my angelic accent and Dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts. For more of me, check out the Great Writer Share podcast. For more of me, listen to the Rebel Author podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become next level authors. What's your problem, Sasha? Are you being dirty? (laughs) I'm sorry. I tried so hard not to laugh the first time you said it. I'm Uh, just bearing my soul here and talking about real problems and all you can think about is filth. (laughs) But like, but 